Ladies and gentlemen, come gather around, come gather around, come gather around. Today, we're going to take this mostly sexy truck and turn it into a sexy truck. Mostly sexy, all sexy. With not much more than a sawzall, a welder, a plasma cutter, a couple of ratchet straps, some C clamps, a hydraulic press, a grinding stone, a flap wheel, a wire wheel, a zip disc, and a bunch of assorted other tools. This episode should be brought to you by Voltaren, a wonderful pain killing ointment because old man muscle comes with a price. Are you listening, Voltaren? Should be sponsored by Voltaren. Let's begin. If you've been following along with this, we got the motor done in the last video, and now we're getting into the frame, and we're going to make a bunch of changes to the frame. This is a long stepper, a long bed step side, which in my opinion is pretty bugly, uh, and I like short box, so that's what I'm going to do. We pulled the bed off. Um, the whole bed floor is rotten, the typical things of these old trucks. Cleaning it up, taking the hood off, trying to get the doghouse off, doghouse, front clip, whatever. This is sped up because this is a phenomenal amount of time put into doing this. Um, and I'm just trying to take it all apart to get her down to the frame. Uh, yeah, not a whole lot to say. The truck is in remarkably good shape. There's typical rust in typical places. Um, and it's, it's not bad. I've seen a lot worse being fixed up by other people. And this is coming along pretty good. So pulling the front clip off to the side, the hood's off to the side. As far as I can tell, this engine's never been apart before. And the transmission's never been out. The transmissions come out through the cab. And the, the high hump floor panel has never been unbolted to get it out. Um, you can see a bit of the rot in the the bumps on the side of the cab it's not bad floor is typical anyways we're cleaning it all up um, lots of video trying to put stuff in zip locks organize it so I know how the heck it goes back together because it's going to be years before I put this thing all back together and I'm not going to remember none of it um, <clears throat> yeah so and the gauge cluster comes out the wiring harness is simple I'm not really keeping track of the harness because I'm not really interested in putting 60 year old wire back in the truck I'm going to put new fresh wire in it. Um, before I pull the cab off, I am bracing the snot out of it because once I unbolt it, I don't want the holes in the floor to change the shape of the cab. So I braced the snot out of it. Um, then took the bumper off, undid some cab mounts. One bolt was an issue. I had to saws all that and grind it. Cab comes off nicely with a cherry picker and a 4x4 post across the roof. Then we got the bare naked frame. Um, front end is torsion bar on 60 to 62. I put the bumper back on just to keep the front legs of the frame rails from doing anything weird, but uh, unbolted the whole cross member. And I'm not sure why I unbolted the upper arms. It made sense to me at the time, but uh, the whole front thing comes out. And uh, I hauled the front cross member and torsion bar and torsion bar adjuster uh, to work just to get it out of my face. Um, drive shaft came out. Probably not going to reuse that. Uh, i got the trailing arms out, got the back axle out. Uh, and you can see this has got an X frame. 60 to 62 was used with these frames. Some say that the torsion bar suspension rides awesome for ride quality. I think it's because the frame is so extra rigid that it actually rides pretty good. A uh, bit of the French wrench to get the bolts for the coil springs out. I didn't hit record to see them actually being removed but they did actually come out. Um, this is a front cross member from an 84 Suburban. Uh, easier to deal with on the torsion bar. I want this thing to ride low. So uh, I'm doing a bunch of changes to the frame to make sure I can ride low. One is pancaking the cross member, where we take this cross member and we cut two inches out of it and weld it all back together. So we're going to plasma cut the whole top off, and that stays in the same location with respect to the frame, but then the rest of it is shortened two inches. So the upper control arms go up two inches, the lower control arms go up two inches. You you get the cross member up. Um, the cross member, original cross member, actually hangs two inches below the frame rails. So by doing this modification, the cross member does not hang two inches below. The torsion bar 
adjuster cross member hangs four and a half inches below the frame which you know you can ride low but then that's going to catch on everything so here i'm spraying a bit of zinc uh weld through primer which made sense at the time i'm not sure it was a good idea but i figured if i'm putting her back together might as well try to seal it up i'll probably hose in some eastwood internal frame coating spray goop in there Anyways, shaping it, welding it, tacking it, closing it all up, smacking it with a hammer, and uh, close her all up. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I thought of cutting all the way through. Uh, I don't think I cut really well. I should have thought about it better, but, you know, you beat it with a hammer, it works. It's not trying to change door gaps or anything. Anyways, this is the first time I ever did a, a pancake cross member, and it turned out okay. Um... Yeah, there we are. The little plates I'm doing right now just close up where it attaches to the frame, on the sides of the frame. Some folks will section the frame and, and leave the cross member unmolested, or they'll just chop the entire frame and re-weld that frame section two or three or four inches higher. That's called Zing the frame, which I'm not going to do. So here, grinding the mother-loving snot out of it to make it all nice and smooth. And... Uh, then we're going to put it back on the frame and see how it goes. I did do one slight change. The front wheels sit a little bit farther back than the fender opening. So this spacer that I'm drilling right now locates the original three holes that held the cross member, but gives me new uh, pilot hole locations to move the new cross member uh, forward one inch. The 84 Suburban cross member has slightly different hole spacing than the original so my little drilling jig just helps me locate everything perfect so zip it all in and now that cross member sits flush with the bottom of the frame rails you can see behind it the transmission cross member which is old school and holds the transmission by the bell housing we're going to lop that out later uh, as well here i'm uh, drilling through the spot welds that hold the bump stop and steering stops on the control arms and then I'm drilling the location hole forward uh, three quarters of an inch to give me a little bit better caster. It's better for handling. Um, just makes the uh, modern vehicles use a lot more caster than we did back in the 60s. So I did this on my 77 Suburban and it it's really transforms the way the vehicle handles. So more caster is good. Then we're going to get into uh, shortening the frame. I haven't found anybody who has shortened these frames. They usually either lop out the X completely, which I think cuts the strength in half, or they switch to a 63 up frame, which has no X in the middle. I think I can shorten this frame and keep the X, and I think it's going to be awesome. As far as I know, I haven't found anybody else who's done it, or at least documented it on the internet. So here it is. And in the description below, I will put a link to my tutorial to show you how to shorten the frame, including where to measure and where to cut. Um, I welded on threadable legs so I could adjust the height at every point of the frame. So once I cut it in half, I can re-zero and re-level the frame. Welded on a bunch of braces to keep the frame from moving once I cut it. And uh, this is sped up ferociously. Uh, I spent a lot of time measuring and thinking and looking at it and figuring it out. And there's good ways to cut and not so good ways to cut. And in the end, this is what I did. Not the strongest cuts, but because it's an X-frame, I don't think it'll make a big difference. I'm not an engineer. But, see, look at this. Even sped up, I'm staring at it going, what have I got myself into? Anyways, cutting welds. Freeing stuff up, and then out comes the chopper and... We cut 12 inches out of the frame right behind the cab and 11 and a quarter inches out of the frame in the forward legs of the X. And then you got to suck that puppy all together. I used a couple ratchet straps to cinch it through and some judicious swinging of the gentle persuader and got the frame joined up, up together. C-clamps through the yin-yang to uh, make sure it's all sitting nice and true check it for square with diagonal measurements and everything and then uh, have my level on there making sure it sits at zero degrees 
all the way across, leveling all the legs to make sure it's as perfect as it can possibly be. And then when you're satisfied or tired of it, tack it together. So tackety tack tack. Now for whatever drunken reason, this section of the video, I had my camera set instead of one picture every um, I forget how long. It was like one picture every 30 seconds? I don't remember. Um, for whatever reason, I had it set at slow motion. So then I had to speed this up. But because I'm using Windows Movie Maker, I can't speed it up more than 64 times. So I'm curious, when I'm finished the video, if my movement is less spastic, herky-jerky, you're playing Doom on a 386 or something. I don't know. Anyways, the front legs got sorted out, some pie cuts in the ends to get it to bend. I tried using a torch to heat, shrink the metal, and uh, bring the forward legs in alignment with each other, but it took forever and a day and didn't move. So I did pie cuts, and, you know, I got a welder. It'll work. Anyways, lots of clamps. Get it lined up as best you can. Yeah, so, other than my weird movements here. I must have swept up 40 pounds worth of grinding dust and rust. Um, what a mess. Anyways, the other thing you need to do is um, add fish plates, which reinforce the area you cut and welded. You don't want to just cut it in half, weld her back together with a simple butt joint, and hope for the best. No, you need to give it an extra reinforcement plate on the back side with as long a fish plate which is I usually make them diamond shaped to disperse the stresses of the patch um, as long as you can fit as, as uh, wide a patch as you can make work in this case I use the original piece that I cut out so if it's a 12 inch section was chopped out the fish plate becomes a 12 inch piece of steel uh, in the front, it's a little weird. You can see some little slots in the X legs where the, the emergency brake um, lever goes through. And you need to make sure you don't lose that. Or I guess you could always change the emergency brake, but um, that's how we want to roll with that. So I think in these views, they get you get a pretty good look at getting the fish plates ready. So grinding on the inside of the frame, making it nice and shiny surfaces. Um, and then I plasma cut out the diamond shapes. You don't really want a straight rectangular patch. Um, so plasma cut. And actually, it's surprising using the plasma cutter. My smoke detector in the shop goes freaking berserk when I plasma cut, even though you can't see anything in the air. Um, and I eventually took it off the wall and stuck it in a cupboard and closed the door, and it would still go berserk in the cupboard. Um, so it makes you think about what you probably shouldn't be breathing when you're using a plasma cutter. Because of unique shapes in the frame, I took these uh, fish plates and just tweaked them a little bit in a hydraulic press. I made a bending apparatus using some angle iron and pieces of pipe and uh, could fold curves or creases in the, these are 3 16 roughly 3 16 plate. It's a little tick underneath. So welding everything up nice and solid, tacking it all together. Um, yeah, and then you kind of want to weld on one side and then do the same thing on the other side of the frame so that the stresses and heat and warping and everything kind of cancel each other out. At least that's your hope. Uh, advantage here, this frame is so rigidly stuck together, it's not really going to move much at all. Uh, you'll see some small triangular fish plates. Some folks say don't um, fish plate the top and bottom uh, flanges of the of the the weld, um, but I did because I I didn't on my '77 Silverado, and they say that's fine, uh, but it kind of sketches me out. So I did on this. It may bite me later. I don't know. It probably can't hurt. 
Um, still, I think this frame is so rigid, it's not really going to be a problem at all. So, anyways, we've got her all welded together. Smooth up the grinds, make it all nice. Look for any defects, grind off the little bits. And then, because I want this thing to ride low, I need to notch the rear end. My Silverado 77 has a little C notch that cuts halfway through the frame rails. And at ride height, it still bottoms out if you're carrying anything other than nothing in the bottom or in the bed of the truck. So in this one, I'm willing to raise the bed floor four inches. Um, so I might as well have four inches of notch. I'll give a link above to a fellow who did some uh, finite element analysis on pipe notches and notching uh, pickup frame rails. And his opinion is the typical notches that we do actually take a lot of strength out of the frame. The, uh, the notch I put in my 77 is halfway through the frame and it's plated on the inside. And that still works out to be like 60% weaker than stock. So holy crap. Um, so his opinion is if you got a four inch thick frame, you want to have four inches going over top of your notch. So that's what I'm doing. So design my own notches to smoothly take the stresses from the frame rail up and over and back down to the frame rail. No sharp corners, no tight folds, no creases. Um, smooth and curves to uh, make it work pretty nice. Look at all the dust that's in the air. I got in the habit of wearing my mask while doing a lot of work in the shop because holy smokes, this stuff just got everywhere and my lungs were hating me. I have a big barn fan in the... In the uh, peak of the, of the attic, not the attic, ceiling, I guess. But it can move quite a bit of air, so at times you'll see me, see me roll the, uh, the roll-up door a little bit to get just to get some air movement. You'll notice a bolt in the bottom left of the hydraulic press. I didn't notice it was working its way out till later. Anyways, got the pipe, not the pipe, got the notches in there, using cardboard to figure out what shape it's going to be, cut her out, plasma cut it, and then I needed a curve, but I don't have bead roller. No, I do have a bead roller. I don't have a set of slip rollers, but I made this attachment on my hydraulic press to gently curve a piece of pipe, you know, in like one inch increments. And, uh, you know, it's all going to be under a frame and painted and hidden and covered in mud, so it's really not going to matter. So... Anyways, weld her all up and fitting it. And you see me going back and forth, just shaping the inside edge because it the, the outside is very simple, but the inside one has to do kind of a curve um, to fit how this frame was made. So I had to tweak the inside plates of the notch. Anyways, they're just clamped on and welded up, ground smooth. And then they just they slip right off. I will weld primer it and then uh, start welding them on. There might be better ways to do this, but uh, one of the things you have to keep in mind is when you weld them in, things are going to move because when you put the weld down, it will actually warp the frame. So what I did is I measured and wrote down what the heights of the rear legs of the frame were. Then when I did all my welding, um, I could heat shrink the frame back to where it was supposed to be. And that took a bit of chasing until I figured out what the heck I was doing. And then it worked fine. I got, um, in cutting the frame shorter, I got within one thirty second plus or minus one thirty second of an inch. And once the notches were in and cut out, uh, I got it to within one thirty second of an inch of where it was too. Uh, but yeah, so cutting her all out. And then the same thing we did for the tops. Get a cardboard pattern, trace it out onto some steel, torch out the steel, put it in the hydraulic press. You should wear eye protection when you're doing a hydraulic press. You should probably wear a face shield. With eye protection, you can still see um, when, when, when you wear a face shield, you can still see that you're pretty. So, old handsome Jack's not so handsome anymore. Anyways. Shaping, shaping, shaping. Kept them all the right size. Off to the right, I had um, the wheel, I guess. that I, I had a lawnmower wheel that I traced around 
to get the, the curve just right. You find whatever fits. Anyways, grind the snot out of it, prime the snot out of it. Um, I wanted to put bump stops in, so I welded a 3 8 nut, drilled and tapped it so I can thread in an energy suspension bump stop on the inside of the arc. Bump stops are good. You want to kind of make sure that it's a rubbery impact. And I think they're legal. You can see a piece of pipe that I welded in the bottom of the frame to try and prevent it from uh, warping, from welding, but it's still warped. So I guess it probably could have warped worse if I hadn't braced it, but whatever. In the background, you can see the purple welder. It's a thermal arc 210 that I nicked from work for the summer just because I don't have a 210 MIG and I didn't want to TIG weld all of this. So, anyways, uh, MIG is good for quick and dirty. If it's pretty, uh, I pick TIG. I'm not going to look at this and ooh and awe ah over the quality of the welds of the whole frame. So, whatever. Then welded, had to re-weld in the uh, rear cross members, or at least the one that I cut out. Uh, and then we're going to torch out the... What is that? That's the cross member for the, that holds the bell housing. The motor was held at the front with just one mount run underneath the front pulley and then the sides are held at the bell housing. So that all gets chopped out. And then one of the last things is this half of the X which hangs two inches below the frame and it'll get caught up on stuff. So I drilled, hole saw and uh, drilled out all the spot welds and I had cut out a plate for um, to just re-close this up in flat so it's, it's not curved the way you see it here um, out of 3 16 plate same stuff I bought for the notches so inside we do a little bit of slicing you can see the ribs on the inside I welded them in uh, when I put the new plate on clean her up check out the plate check out the alignment drill all the holes <laughs> And then stick her on, grind all the edges nice and smooth. Plunk her on, clamp her on, weld the mother-loving snot out of it. And then the frame is the, everything is the low part of the frame. There's nothing hanging lower than the frame than the frame. No cross member hanging below, no X brace hanging below. This thing should be able to sit flat. So, all right. I also, as you can see here, I'm cutting out the trailing arm brackets and mounting those flipped which improve your anti-squat and really improve your traction for the back of the vehicle. It uh, gets the rear wheels to hook up a bit better. Anyways, bolt those back in, and then we should have this thing sitting on the fly frame. Woo! But hey, thanks for watching. Leave a comment, subscribe, and don't get arrested. See ya!